um, we're going to invite you to speak first. So if you want to unmute yourself. Uh, and um, again, thank you both very much to both panelists for being here. And we look forward to, uh, to learning from your experiences. OK, so I told you the technology thing is, is so new for me. All kinds of things are popping up on this screen. So I'm just like, don't touch that. Don't touch this. <laughs> we are offering so, grace <laughs> to all of us. Great. great. So my name is Darrell Jones. I um, served 32 years in prison for a crime I didn't commit. I was recently fully exonerated in June of last year. Um, I'll be celebrating that anniversary. If COVID's over, we'll have a party. You're all invited. Um, you know, if we're talking about the experience, I, I think the reason that I joined on is to really bring in an understanding of what it feels like, right? Because a lot of people miss out on the feeling of being incarcerated and what goes on in that environment. And I want people to understand the suffering and how the, I call it the injustice system actually works. I was, I've been, I was there since I was 18 years old. You know, I got out at 52. And there were so many traumatic experiences that I saw while incarcerated. There were so many flaws in the system that I learned about being incarcerated. Regardless to creating programs and doing the things I was doing, I recognized how adversal the system was to change how they fought against the idea of even having programs, how they hamper the relationship between the community and those that are incarcerated. Also, there are a lot of recent stories about, and if you're trying to, I, I wanna be clear about this, and, 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 I, and I'm speaking at Harvard, and I'm always clear about this when I'm talking to any forum. If my case is the issue that you really want to learn about. I wouldn't want to take the time up really just talking about my case because if you Google it, you'll be all in that case. I want to use my time to be able to associate you to an understanding of the prison system and hope that if there's lawyers here and there are people that are fighting for, you know, against these injustices, that you have enough information or that you get the information you need to have a better understanding of how you could help us, what can be done and whether you're a prosecutor or whatever, and how you can be an addition to this change that is really not occurring because a lot of people are just unaware of how it works. Um, as I said, I went in at 18. I went into Walpole Prison when it was Walpole Prison. And at that time, people know the difference. It's called Cedar Junction Prison now. But when I went in, Massachusetts Prison was known as we had some of the highest murder rates. It was a place that was like, you know, a dungeon. And when I went in, homicides were frequent, you know, um, you know, rapes, all kinds of things, right? Drug addiction, it really doesn't change. They just change the titles of the places. I didn't know, I didn't know how to reach out and get the help that I needed. And it was difficult to communicate with the community as to, hey, I'm here innocently, or what the situation is in prison and what the, you know, what the complications were. And I think that's important to me to get across what the complications are. One of the things that I'd like you to keep in mind, because there are a lot of people here, and I'm sure a lot of influential people, and um, Dr. Tim Kutchins happens to be my doctor, which is an unusual story. So some of the things that I did to get through in prison, and if you see Dr. Um, Tim Kutchins here, I actually reached out and I had Dr. Tim, a friend of my dad, and. I had him come in. So I reached out to get my own mental health and he would come up to the prison as my mental health worker, you understand, and help me through those situations. So I learned the ability to get the things that I need to survive in there and to make it through those difficult times. So definitely a shout out to him. I'm more of a ask me questions type guy, right? And don't be afraid of asking those questions. I don't really want to preach. I, that's not my thing. I really want to interact. Interaction is everything for me. There's enough performances. I take a lot of things that go on out in the community since I've been home as a performance. Like people jump in when the media is there or they jump in when the opportunity comes up. The, the, the whole criminal justice system being on the spotlight now is no different than it always was under the spotlight, but we don't follow up. And I, I, would, I would call on everybody to follow up and I'm looking for people to join in 
with a new thing that we're doing called Do Your Homework Media. And the reason I'm saying that is that even this will be interpreted a certain way if someone else took control of it. As a media source of our own, we can get direct information to each other. We can actually be professionals giving out information to the public working collectively together. So that is the purpose of Do Your Homework Media, something that we're trying to start. So I would rather just participate in terms of the questioning and things that are of interest to you and in knowing the background about how prison works. Should I go on? Well, thank <laughs> I mean, you. I'm, 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 I'm you trying to there, You just got to stand. <laughs> we can talk all day, day, honestly. So yes, I mean, you want to go on. No, I'm, you know, the reason I'm saying that is because I do a lot of these, but sometimes I see us, you know, basically at the podium and people are talking, you know, kind of not at each other, but just making statements and moving on. I believe that if Gerald here has something that he has to get out of someone in my position, then I want to open the arena for Gerald to do that. You know, if Mitchell wants to do that, if Anna wants to do that, me just telling you something, then it's like a news broadcast. It'll, it'll be interpreted wrong because you won't be able to ask what you need. You won't be able to make use of me in terms of what you're trying to apply or what you're trying to go to school and do. So I am the interactive person. I want to talk to other human beings. That's what freedom is. And I'm taking advantage of freedom by providing what I suffered and taking in what I can learn from others as well. All right, so with that, why don't we um, switch up our format a little bit? Um, and Jamal, if you want to give like your own introduction and, and tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are and your story, and then we can just open it right up for Q&A and spend most of our time doing doing question and answer. How's that sound? Uh, sounds great to me. Um, my story is all over the place. Um, so I'm going to, and the same thing uh, Darrell said, I love what Darrell said, like, we're here because we've been there. And a lot of people have these conversations who haven't been there. Um, so we are two individuals, um, um, Darrell serving 32 years, myself serving one, um, the first incarceration, and then a month the second time. Uh, and the, the second time was actually the worst uh, because it was in a different neighborhood. So you have to deal with different uh, issues. But anyway, um, we're here to to talk about these experiences and hope that they lead into some questions, something that um, um, that you can take away and and move forward with, not just ending the conversation here, you know, not just like, oh yeah, we talked to those two black guys who were in jail and, and that's it. Like, no, like, I remember I got sent, you guys know The Hole, right? You guys heard of The Hole? what they call on tv the whole uh it's called the it's called the uh the, the smoo we call it the smoo um i have crohn's disease i don't take medication for it um at the time i didn't take medication for it the jail knew about it um and told me how to take uh four like big ass horse pills three times a day and you know i'm i'm like i'm I don't need that, you know, I don't even take that on the street. And they said, well, here you're a liability. So you're either gonna take this pill now or you're not getting it ever. So if you do have complications with your Crohn's, we're not gonna help you. Um, and that put me at like a, a crossroads because I'm like, at one hand, like, what if I actually do need it in here? I don't, I don't know, you know? And then, and then the other side is like, I don't need medication that I, I haven't been taking. So <clears throat> I decided to cheat the medication. And I did that three times a day. <sighs> I don't know the math. For a long time. Um, and I had worked my way down from uh, medium to minimum, um, thinking I'm going to get a chance to, to leave this place. Um, so I'm out, they have us out on the highway, we're picking up trash, which is a privilege of, of minimum. If you have minimum, you have access to outside. So you're outside, you're on the highway, you're, you know, stick and pick. Um, a squad car pulls up. Woo! And everyone's like, oh shit, you know? And they're like, I'm here for Mr. Hamilton. And I'm looking like, well, I'm already in jail, what are you here? 
So they bring me back and they wouldn't tell me the whole car ride. I'm like, yo, what is this about? What is this about? And they're like, you know what this is about. You know what this is about. You know what this is about. Still, I don't know nothing. Um, get back to the jail. They hand me a bag. They told me to pack my stuff. They were nice enough to let me pack it myself. Um, they told me I was going to the smooth. And I spent, I can't remember. It was either four or six days there. Um, one of those even numbers. Um, but shit, it felt like forever. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it smells bad. It's, it's just bad. It's just a bad place to be. But I tell that story to, to say, like, I don't know, something about that story stuck out to me because I wasn't committing a crime, but I was criminalized for something that could have been avoided. And um, I remember I saw the, the med cart guy after that, after they brought me back from the smoke. And he looked at me and he said, you're a despicable human being. You know that Hamilton? And I looked at him and I was like, he was like, yeah, that was me. I got you sent to the smoke. That was me. You're going to take your pills? From that day forward, I took those pills. Um, so I tell that story just as like as one of many. Um, the shit's traumatic. The shit is it's traumatic. Um, I still have nightmares about all my dreams. About 98% of them involve jail. Either um, I'm running from the cops, they're trying to like put me in jail, or I'm already in jail. I'm trying to get out, or I've been sentenced and I'm and I'm sitting and preaching. It's always something with jail, and um, I could feel it. I feel that like they got me. I have no control over anything. Um, I can feel that in my sleep, and I wake up with that anxiety a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to talk about something else? Um, can I say something real quick? Yeah, let's, let's open it up for questions. Go ahead, Anna. I just want to say that I went to college with Jamal, and not that it matters, but he didn't do anything that these rich white kids weren't doing at that school already, no matter what. I just want to put it out there. Like, it's just like, that needs, like, we can't talk about this without talking about that. Whatever he did was like, it could have been the same exact situation with, if he was in a different tax bracket and a different color, it would have been different. Now I, I, I'm speaking from it from a different vantage point because when this happened to him, I wasn't an attorney. There was nothing that I could like, what, I don't, I'm not proud of what, what I did was just stay away from it because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do about it. Now I, I ended up, you know, I went to law school, I'm an attorney, I engage with these things differently and I, yo, his, his file can come across my desk and I would look at it and be like, really? Like, is this a real thing that they're doing to this, to this kid? And so just putting it out there, not that it matters. And uh, he didn't, sorry, is it Darrell? How do I say it again? I've only ever read it and now I feel like I keep messing it up. Can you tell me how to say it one more time? It's Darrell. Darrell. Like Darrell didn't do anything. And what Jamal did was not, was not, I'm, I'm a prison and I, and I'm an open book. If, if we want to talk about it, we can. It, I don't. I don't think it's. Well, you can talk about it. It's your story. But I'm just saying. Like I, I know that what he did did not warrant that, and I know that if he was a different person, he wouldn't have had to go through that. That's all I'm saying. I'm gonna shut up now. Goodbye. No, don't shut up. <laughs> I, I, so, so for people who don't know, don't shut up. Thank you, Shade. Um, I was incarcerated for robbing a white drug dealer on campus you uh, see the fact that that man thought he could even call the cops is white privilege i'm sorry see, he, this had, he had an, a slew of drugs acid molly capsules weed everything in his room um i was expelled the uh before i was convicted he was not he was allowed to graduate while i was sitting in jail um, yeah, and I was, I was expelled before I was convicted, but yeah.
much. Jamal, thank you for sharing that. Uh, thank you for sharing about your story. Darrell, thank you for sharing about your story. Um, let's, let's continue the conversation with, with questions and, and, and reflections um, for, for Darrell and for Jamal and, and um, Shade in her position as both um, a public defender and a prison abolitionist is happy to um, also engage with questions if people have um, for that legal perspective as well. So um, I see that Kershaw has a question. So what I'm gonna invite people to do, Kershaw, you can go first. Um, raise your hand electronically if you, if you have a question that you want to voice and engage in this conversation. Feel free to also use the chat. I saw some people already um, giving shout outs and comments. Larry put snaps to the Do Your Homework media that Darrell was sharing about. So feel free to use the chat to continue the conversation. But if you have a question that you want to voice, um, please raise your hand using the hand raise um, button, which is under the participants toolbar there. Um, and we will uh, call on you and invite you to ask questions. So. Uh, Kershaw, go ahead and feel free to, if it's a question for a specific panelist, you can share that or, um, or if it's open. Can I give um, one question before? I'm sorry, Alec. Just one question. Yes. You know, I, I would love to respond to the chats, but I realize that I only know how to write into the box. I don't know how it sends because there's no send button. So if anybody can help me with that, then I can chat with you back and reply. I appreciate that, Larry. Just by the way. You can press enter. Yeah. So whenever you press the enter button, that should send it. Um, and I'll also. I don't, even, I don't even know how to write in the box. So you do so if, if you click into the box, um, like if you mouse, can everybody see the box? I'm on an iPad. I'm on a tablet. So. Yeah, okay. I don't know what it looks like on an iPad. So Jamal no and Darrell, I invite you I invite you to be present in the conversation. Don't worry, <laughs> we'll we'll uh, put the chat and and if you're open to sharing your your contact information afterwards, there's also um, ways for people to get in, yeah. in touch. And I well. can I can monitor the chat and I'll just I'll uh, share any questions that we have that come up through the chat. I'll share them verbally um, so that you can stay present. Go yeah. ahead, Kershaw. Uh, so I kind of have two questions. One is for both of you. What do you think would have been different? Do you think it would have been very, how much different do you think it would have been if you were incarcerated today instead of when you were incarcerated? I'll take it for you. <laughs> it would be no different. It would be, it would never be different when society is still doing the same thing. Innocent men are released every day. Innocent women are released every other day all across this country. This is not a new thing and it hasn't changed. And that is the most important point is that we discover a problem and the, you know, it's its own COVID and they've never came with a cure for that yet. So it is, it, it can happen and, and Kershaw, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a great thing that you're on here because it does not, a lot of people misinterpret this. You know, and, and, and I'd like to talk about the race factor later, but a lot of people misinterpret this. Men that I, would, I was in with, whether they be Latino, you know, um, African-American, white, when that occurs in injustice system, they take all types. You understand? It could be Ron Nix here today. It could turn around and say, you know, he looks prestigious. He's about his business. Maybe a professor, I don't know you, Ron, I'm just using an example. And yet and still, someone can say, he looks like that guy, right? And once that system locks into you, the problem is, what do we do after that, right? So those are a few things that I want to talk about. But it can happen, young man, to you. And the thing that I'm interested in is trying to prevent it from happening to you. Our youth are in danger of this. They took my youth. So... From 18 on, my whole youth was gone. So everything you ever done, young man, you know, playing on a computer, um, touching a cell phone, none of that existed for me. This is my first experience. I am actually younger than you when you put it in really human nature. I am a two-year-old in the world relearning things that you already know. They're all brand new for me. And we have to do something to make sure it doesn't happen to you. That is the point. 
Um, and also, do you think they should have investigated more before convicting any of you? So it, do you think it would have changed if they had investigated more and some and more people got involved and maybe they found more evidence before just convicting you and deciding that, hey, we found somebody who looks like the person who did it. We should just end we should just be like, okay, convict this person with just a small amount of evidence. Do you think it would have been better if they had, it, I'm get, it, it would have been better if they had investigated more? So Jamal, I don't, I don't, I'm not a time grabber, so I want to give Jamal a chance and then, you know, I can address that. Brother Jamal, you want to address that? Um, my answer is no. This no. In my opinion, the case should have been dropped. I shouldn't have four felonies on my record from that. It should have just been dropped. Um, Can you in a little bit? I had no priors to that, no criminal history before that. Um, yeah, that's my answer. Um, I just wanted to chime in real quick. So. One thing that I, I didn't know before I started going into the courts is just how much, by the time like a jury hears evidence, it has been argued to death by attorneys. There's so many technicalities and like the re so like the story that the people hear and what they actually get to make a decision on has already been chopped up and like changed and, and this is okay and this isn't okay. So it's like, we don't even really lay it out on the table and allow for folks to make, uh, an accurate and informed decision about the situation, and which I think is also a problem. So in terms of like, do, do you think that like people should have investigated more and things like that? Like, I think absolutely, especially in cases of actual innocence, like Mr. Jones, but I also think generally speaking, our legal system is more concerned with the technicality versus justice. It's like, there, you could have like something that says that, you know, this person is 100% innocent but like there's some random rule that says that you can only introduce this at a certain time in a certain place in front of a certain judge and then it doesn't matter anymore so i think that like we need to move move away from this idea of like just like playing this like really intricate game to like actually seeking justice so like i shouldn't have to go to a three-year training camp law school to understand the law because it touches and concerns everyone everyone has to follow the law so they make it complicated for what reason they make it extremely complicated so that regular people can interact with, they can engage with, they can't defend themselves in the way that they would if they didn't make it difficult on purpose. I just wanted to like chime in and say that. But, yeah. I just wanted to chime in on difficult on purpose. Um, I'm gonna give y'all more fucked up stories. Uh, this is another fucked up story. The day I was supposed to get out, I was supposed to see the judge um the bus leaves for court they wake you up at like 4 a.m it leaves at like around 8. so from 4 a.m i'm banging on myself i'm watching everyone else getting ready this shower and i'm looking through and i'm telling the ceo like yo today's my court day open my cell and he's like nah you're not on my list and i'm like nah today I, today's my court day open the cell i missed that court day because of him they called and they were like oh yeah it turns out you know you did have a court date but the bus is already gone so you gotta wait um they do shit they do shit <laughs> they do shit yo um anyway that was that yeah it takes um, so, gonna... so, uh, situation, like, oh sorry i was gonna say a situation like uh sorry am i accidentally cutting somebody off i don't know if my internet is lagging but a situation like mr jones's situation like it takes two weeks sometimes to go through a trial and then to undo that mistake if somebody is wrongfully incarcerated it is years the appeals process to, to undo a mistake takes years so it's like how is it this easy for for us to like condemn people to live their life in a cage but it's so incredibly complex and difficult and expensive to undo a mistake like that it's just it's mind-blowing and yeah We can't Thank hear you. Can you unmute this? Hand, so yes. hands up. Um, Emily All Rivera, right. um, who's been nodding along a lot. So I think, I'm not sure if your question relates to this or something else, but why don't you jump in? Thank you, Marissa. And thank you to Darrell and Jamal for speaking. 
I really, really like your boat, the topic about all this in your stories. It's just really, to be honest, it's sad. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be straight up. And my, I have two questions for you, actually. So y'all can hear me, right? Good volume. All right. Thank you. So what would, to both of you, what, what would you say, for example, for an 18-year-old that's going through exactly what y'all both went through, what would you say to them? I'll take it. I would say to them, look at the adults. So I'm gonna tell you why, why I'm saying that. I realize a lot of times we're saying we have a youth problem, we have a kid problem. We don't, we have an adult problem. Adults are here ahead of children. So therefore we protect children and we communicate things to educate them. We fail. So let me try to make this point. When I went to prison, it is Commonwealth versus Darrell Jones. And what happens is a lot of us try to exclude ourselves from that. There is nothing else we can do but take on the fact that it was Commonwealth versus Jamal, Commonwealth versus Darrell Jones. In this state of Massachusetts, the law is clear that a district attorney cannot prosecute because they want to prosecute. They have to prosecute in behalf of the community. When I was in prison, I was in prison under Mitchell's name, Anna's name, Roger's name, Isaac's name. I was convicted under all of you guys' names. Do you understand that? So the conviction under my own mother, my own family's name. So what you have to try to understand is that nothing in that system will change until we collectively say, we're the community, we're the Commonwealth, and I'm seeing what you're doing in that courtroom, and I don't like it. And until that is happening, they will be able to do whatever they want to do. So we're not showing up at these courthouses. And one of the things that I've recommended is that every court proceeding trial in Massachusetts should be live on something where we can all watch that trial because it's a trial in our name. And if we can watch it, then we can have some say. Right now, there's a trial going on. And, you know, it, maybe not at this particular time, but there are trials in the future going on. And those trials half of us wouldn't even know they happened. And that's how I went to jail. Before this, you wouldn't even know I existed. If we took over the factor of Commonwealth, then you have all the say in the world. And if Michael comes out and says, not in my name, and when I was in Memphis, Tennessee, we did a movement and we all went down to innocent, we had 200 of us guys or whatever, and we marched in Memphis, Tennessee, and I created a movement called Not In My Name. It is incumbent upon the community to say, not in my name, you wouldn't do that because if I wore a mask, I hate to use this example, but I use it. If I wore a mask and I was running around robbing people or raping women or doing whatever, and I wore a t-shirt with Sarah's name on it and her face, and it was always mask, Sarah would be sure to be at the news saying, I don't know that guy. I don't know why he's running around with a shirt with me on it doing this, right? Well, that is the same thing that occurs under your name. So while we're talking, keep in mind that I was convicted under your name. Those 32 years wasn't just done by the Commonwealth. It was done because they used you as part of the process saying they okay it. Today, the question is, do you okay it? And how long will you allow the system to use your name without a voice in that? We have to demand something in the action. And one of those things should be public view of courtrooms while they're doing those processes. All right. Thank you. That was really good. So my last question for you two is that what would you change about the whole system? Like, what is something that you would definitely change? Jamal? I don't for me, but I would love to answer that after they speak, because I have some ideas. Uh, yeah, I mean, fuck, where do you start, right? Um, and Darrell made a good point um, about starting with the trial process. Um, so many trials that go on, um, so many lives in the hands of, of uh, people making these decisions. But anyway, I would focus on the rehabilitation. Um, personally, that's what I would focus on because I feel like, you know, there's there, there is a lot of work being done about um, prison reform, um, but what what goes overlooked is how we acclimate these um, these uh, these individuals back into society after they've spent 
years, months, um, all of that, you know, in this place, we can't just, you know, spit them back out and, and expect them to, to know anything. Like Darrell said, he, he, he feels like a two year old baby, you know, like, um, the world changes, the world, the world keeps moving, even when you're not. Um, but I, I feel like we fail, we fail most of these um, individuals with how we transition them back into the world with our own expectations um, on what they should be doing or shouldn't be doing um, and just judgment. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Can I say one thing? And I'm, I, I wanna say one more thing. I, um, yo, before this call, y'all, I don't know how many of y'all is on here. I was so confident. I, I kept telling everyone, I'm an open book, I'm an open book, I'm an open book. But now talking about it, I'm getting really emotional. Um, so this is difficult. I just want to let y'all know. This is more difficult than I anticipated. Thank you for doing it. I appreciate you. Um, I just wanted to say one quick thing. I think that's really important, the idea of rehabilitation. And I, when I was in college, I worked for the one and only program in the state of Massachusetts that worked specifically with, uh, it was called Rexo Rehabilitation of Ex-Offenders. And when people got out, we would help them get IDs, help them get jobs and all these things. And that place has since closed. And it was the only one that existed. It was in downtown. It was a big deal. We don't have those things and it's a problem. And it's something that I think we need to like really advocate for. Uh, so I think that was a really good point. And then I wanted to say, um, I wanted to answer that question even though it wasn't technically directed at me because like I am very much aware that I'm a part of the system and like I'm a prison abolitionist, but my coworker, not all of my coworkers are. Like some of my, some of the public defenders that I work with are like, oh, that dude needs to, like he need, like, you know, like they have these conversations and they don't have the same visceral reaction to prison that I do. So I always say that in my perfect world, my job doesn't exist at all. The way that it works now, it's really, it's adversarial. It's us versus them. It's like this side and that side, when in actuality, uh, Mr. Jones made the perfect point when he said it's the Commonwealth versus this person. Until that person is convicted, and even after they're convicted, they are part of the Commonwealth. They are part of our community. It can't be me versus me. Like that doesn't even make any sense. You know, and, I, and, and I've had these conversations with like younger district attorneys where I'm like, yo, like you have already decided that this person is guilty. You have already made that decision. You have already made that determination and it is guiding everything that you do. And so if I could change one thing about the system, it would be that there would be no, uh, because at the end of the day, right, it's, it's me, the defense attorney versus the DA. And you know who always loses? Not me, I go home. Not the DA, she goes home. Nobody, every single time that, you know, and it hurts, like, cause I love, I love the people that I work with and for, and it hurts and I've cried. And it, but it's like, at the end of the day, I'm going home, you know? And so are they. And so like, if I could change anything, it would be that. It wouldn't be this weird game that we're playing with people's lives, like they're chess pieces. It would be a thing where like restorative justice is at the core of it. We're working to see how we can like, you know, help anybody that's been harmed or, or whatever and it's like there's so many things that like we don't want to like acknowledge like if we could fix income inequality in this country most crime goes away period just period most crime goes away if we can fix income inequality but we don't want to do that because there are people in power that benefit from there being crime honestly so yeah so i would change that i would i i often there are times i've only been i've only been doing this for a short time i i, I just graduated from law school about a year and a half ago but I sometimes feel like, yo, maybe this, this role isn't for me because I'm aware of that and I'm not proud of that. Like we play games with people's lives and we have conversations and like our client isn't even in the room and I'm like playing, I'm, I'm, we're, we're literally being like, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Like when we're, we're, deal, we're wheeling and dealing and it doesn't matter at the end of the day because I get to go home and you get to go home, you know? And there's only, the only person that ever loses is the defendant. And that is just infuriating to me. So if I could change anything, like our whole entire us versus them system is just a wash. Like it's just not, I don't think it works. But anyways, that's it. Thank you for that. There, for both Jamal and, and Shadez, you were speaking, there were a lot of um, 
comments affirming and taking to heart what you were saying. And, and um, Jamal, I just want to echo uh, appreciation for the realness that you're that you're opening into this conversation as well. Um, Darrell, did you want to address the question about what changes you'd make to the system? Okay, so I don't know who on here knows me, but I don't come into these things on no friendship. I don't come into these things. I come in here for business. I come in here, I'm not trying to offend. I come in here for directness. In the Olympics, I wanna be clear with this. I wanna learn things and exchange things. But one thing we know, if we were running in the US Olympics, there is lanes. You can be all the way to that finish line, but if you step on that line in that lane, you're out to a lane, right? I like people to participate in their lanes, right? If there's a big difference from living it and learning it. There's a big difference from experiencing it and then passing on. And I use this example, and I'm sure the ladies understand this. The best gynecologist in the world can give us every example he wants to give us about what it's like to have a child, have a baby, and go through childbirth. He may have studied all of that, but every woman on this planet knows he really does not know that feeling and what it takes and what it feels like, no matter what he studied. And that is what we're dealing with today. That's why I would love to hear from all of you guys. Sometimes the public has to learn to receive information to make you better at what you're doing, especially when you're a lawyer. And sometimes you have to get to what you need to have application for that. If you continue to be book smart, you'll put a period on your own life because you won't get the information you need to be getting, believe me. And in terms of programming, let me tell you, and I want to let Simone get in because he had a little hand up. And you should be mindful that prison, women's prison, men's prison, wherever the prison is, the programs that you need involve the same thing society needs. First of all, you got to provide love. No one thinks of that. You got to provide the idea that we are still human beings. Once you keep categorizing us outside of human beings, then you have set the standard that we are different people. Hey, hey Darrell, what they call lunchtime? Yeah, huh? Behind the wall, what they call lunchtime? You know what I mean? It, it, it's, I don't know what they call in the county, bro, but we got a whole different slang, right? And it, it, it's equivalent to child, though, right? It's equivalent. It's equivalent. But I want to stay on point to this, right? If they want to educate on that, that's somebody that wrote that in the book, bro. I'm different about it. Like, if you can look it up and Google it, you don't need me. You know what I mean? It's, it's hot outside. I'd have loved to have the day. I'm here. So if you can Google it, you can get it from Google. If we're going to talk, let's talk. So what I'm saying to you is that provide the idea of love, right? You cannot take guys in there and put us under programs. Reentry doesn't work for this factor. The programs, so when I was in prison, I got every certificate the prison ever has for whatever program I have, every one of those certificates. Now, even when I didn't need them, right? So anger management is their main thing. Um, go to the anger management program. That's how you get good time and all this type of stuff, right? Okay, when I come out into the real world and I come to Emily to get employed and she says to me, so what exactly did you learn in prison? And you know, um, why would you prefer, I got this anger management paper. She's gonna be, she should be saying to herself, damn, you already got a problem. I'm presenting a whole bunch of certificates of the problems I'm supposed to have. That doesn't work out here in the society. In Massachusetts, we don't have any automotive skills. We don't have things that you come out here and apply. They're not programs based on that. They're programs based on money. So they can bring people in, hire people and say, hey, we're educating you, right? It's not an education process. And the reason that I said that the love is important because we want them to understand what it feels like to still know that you're part of the community and to know that you're a human being. We need to bring in the aspects so that they care. If you look at Boston right now and you look at the news every day, I actually just did a thing on 25, Channel 25. And if you look at it, all they're talking about, release convicts are coming out and they're killing and they're doing all these things right there. And it's the release prisoners, the release prisoners. No, if I release my dog out my home and he's a pit bull or, or whether he's a rock wilder or he's a small jiu-jitsu or whatever they call a little dog, right? If he bites someone, it may have to do with how I handled him. You understand what I do with him on the inside, what I taught him and how I dealt with him. The programs that I'm saying should be bringing in the community. I should have access to Isaac. I should have access to Amy. You should be going to the prison. And a lot of people in this community don't understand 
You have a right to come into the prison. I ran the African Heritage Program in the prison. We invited in all the leaders, Mel King, you know, Chuck Turner, me, rest in peace. I used to bring all of them in. I started the first one in there we brought in the community. Start coming in. Go into the prison. Become a volunteer. Become a visitor. So go to those programs. Reach out. We send out invitations for the community to come in. Interact with the people that are in there so that they understand, hey, one day Emily could be walking down the street and a guy could be thinking something crazy, but he could turn around and say, I remember her. You understand that? She participated. She, she came. She taught me something. She told me something. We have to provide first humanity to each other, and we have to provide it in there. It's no different than the real world. Let's, let's separate that. The programs have to involve you. We have to hear from you the same way I am now. That's what's important to me, that we participate together and that we can hear from you. That's what I want to do today. That's what I'm interested in. I want to hear from you, but I also want to understand what you don't understand so we can help each other. But the programs are going to have to involve bringing human beings together, and we have to approach it that way. If you don't, the guys that's coming out do not want to hear your story after that. Let me explain something to you. When you've done all those years in prison and you come out, the last thing you're looking for after all those years is for someone else to tell you, hey, how you doing? What can I help you? No, 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 no. No, you're ready for action. I want a job just like you want a job. I want to be able to get along. That's why domestic violence is, do you guys understand when they talk about this domestic violence rate, what it's like when you come home, whether you have a young lady, your family, your mother, you can't relate in that house to everybody else because your mental is like, okay, you're talking too much or this is bothering you. You're used to being, I'm used to being in a single cell in that maximum prison for years by myself. And then you throw me around people. My tolerance is totally different, right? So not being able to relate and be around people, that is a serious issue. And we have to start thinking about that. Thank you, Darrell. So you're providing direct conversation here and, and, and there's a lot of other hands up. Um, I saw, I think Simone and then um, Isaac and Miles. Uh, so we'll start with Simone. Did you still have a question? No, okay. Um, so we'll go with Isaac and then with Miles. Hey, yeah, uh, so it, it's so cool to hear uh, that there are other people who are uh, who call themselves prison abolitionists uh, here in the chat. Um, I had a couple questions that may have been partially answered already. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, I wrote them down here. Uh, do do any of you guys have uh, ideas about uh, what avenues towards uh, prison abolition there are uh, right now? Uh, you know, when I have these conversations, I, I talk a lot about like what I'd like to see go away, but I don't exactly know how to talk to people about like how we get there. Uh, and I'm a little new to uh, having these ideas myself too. So um, and then and then. Uh, after that, how how do you react to people who aren't necessarily like lost causes on the ideas of prison book form, but really still have uh, beliefs that they learned, uh, um, like where, how they feel uh, good about the way the system currently works? I guess if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my questions. If, if I could actually, I've been reflecting on this question a lot recently because I feel like when people, uh, when I say that to people, they're like, well, what about the serial killers? What about the people that just can't stop stabbing other people? And I'm like, dog, that's not who's in our prisons. That's just not who's in our prisons. People like Jamal are in our prisons. People that are like literally, like if Jamal had access to, to money and resources at that time, he would have never considered doing that. Mr. Jones was completely innocent. The people that we, we need to like really start to illuminate who it is that are who is who are in these places right and also in terms of like you're saying like you can identify the problem if you don't know the solution that's okay i've been a prison abolitionist for probably i'm gonna say like 10 years at this point and i don't have the answers but i can identify a problem and that is okay like when we're talking like when we talk about like in, in different like points in history right like i'm sure that folks that were like 
But who knows you're not even gonna work? And you know what you know what the answer is? I know but it's going to be better than this. You know, like I, I might not know all of the I might not know all of the answers, but I know that this is a problem. I know the questions, right? And so like I, I, I kind of talked about this earlier. Like if we in this country had inc had like base universal basic income, so people are not fucking broke, I don't know, people are not broke all the time. If we had if we started to treat drug addiction as an actual like as a public health issue instead of a criminal one like if there's like a random dude out there that like really likes to eat babies or something maybe he shouldn't be outside fine but that's not who's in our prisons most of the people that are in our prisons are there as a result of this of like the systems around them getting them there so until we like if we're going to be honest with ourselves about why it is that people go to prison we need to, I, I think that's where we start right and then like we, we go on from there like it's like cool like you can trace most crime to poverty honestly to abject poverty most crimes can be traced back to that and then if we actually think that there is i remember i was in law school when i learned that on average people that get plea deals get anywhere from six uh 60 40 to 60 percent less time on their sentences than people that go to trial so i'm like oh so what you're telling me is that there is no real difference between four years and ten years if you're actually trying to like fix this so like the fact that we have a system where you can plea out and get less time already shows people behind this don't actually think prison does anything they don't actually think that it fixes the whatever behavior you're trying to fix. So what I would say to you, Isaac, I think you're awesome. And I think that it's okay to not have the answers and you can totally be like, yo, I know that that's a problem. I don't necessarily have to know the solution, but I, but the first step to finding a solution is to identify the problem. And that's a problem and that's okay. Cause that's what they'll do. That's what they'll tell you. Like they'll try to like get you to back down by being like, well, what about like these serial killers? And I'm like, dog, that's not a thing. That's not, that's not who's in prison. So also like being educated about like who's in there, why they're in there, how long they're in there for and what that looks like helps. But also it's okay to totally be like, yo, dude, I don't fuck with people being in cages, period. Full stop. I said what I said. You know? Oh yeah. Uh, full stop. <laughs> like, that's okay. Like that. You don't have to know all the answers. Uh, Wait, yeah. Because there, there's definitely, there are those people out there who it's not really about like whether it solves a problem or uh, whether it's right or wrong, they they have an idea of what like it should be. And yeah, that was a really great question. I've been thinking about that a lot myself, and I'm always formulating. It. Add me on Facebook. I talk about this a lot. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yes, and we we do hope these conversations continue um, beyond this as well. I know there's a, there's several other questions. We're not going to be able to get to all of them, unfortunately. Um, we're going to move on to Miles and then invite if there are any other debaters as well who um, who had questions that haven't yet gotten to answer them. Um, we invite you to raise your hand as well. So I'd like to come in for a second. I told you I don't come in here to be friends. I come in here to get to work, right? So I'm going to address this to Anna. And 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 you are fortunate that I'm not a host, right? Because I'm, when I'm on these platforms, I see it differently. So let me say why I'm saying that. My sister, if you are in the job you're in, then you should ask yourself, the information you're providing to us is the information you provide to your people. And if your people are not hearing you, you really should be taking in what's heard here. You are explaining a lot, and I respect that. But at the same time, I always hit people with one thing. When's the last time you did time? What prison were you in? How long were you gone away? What do you really know about prison other than what someone told you, read, or you saw in a courtroom, right? And you have to respect that. And that is one of the things. Otherwise, there's really no need for me to be here, you know what I mean? Because the idea is to hear from everybody, to me, and to be able to address what Gerald might have on his mind, not for me to just look at him and go, Man, that's a nice beard, Gerald. I'm not interested in that. It's a warm day out. I am. One thing I learned in prison, and one thing I learned about time, there are different kind of people that I call time jackers, right? So if someone was to come up and rob me and pull a gun on me and took everything that I had and stripped me butt naked, everything else I'd be able to get back. I might not be able to get back the same things, but you can guarantee I'd be able to get those things back. There are people that walk in this world that wear invisible guns that they put on you and they tell me about Michael Jordan's life and things I can't do anything with. I consider them worse than someone robbing me because it's like a time jacket. It's an invisible gun held on me, wasting my time. 
I did enough time to waste any time, right? The principal point is we have to stick to the issues at hand. If we're talking about people's lives in prison, elsewhere, when we're in prison, we watch things like this on the news, right? We watch people interpret us, interpret us, interpret us, and add in and interpret us. You don't know. And you need to know so that you can go back in and argue the case with the people around you who can participate in that, right? It's, 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 it's important that we do that. You are a translator to your people. Remember that lane we talked about? You are a translator to them. You can take this information from Jamal, me, or whoever else may provide it and be able to bring it back to your people. And then we should support you. If you call out something and say, hey, don't debate with me and argue about it. I want to bring in real guys. I'll bring you 10 of us that got out innocent. I actually kind of run with my group. And I'll say, here 10 innocent men were standing here with her. Now go ahead and make this case, my sister, right? That is how we have to get that information across. So don't misinterpret what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when we have these platforms, we have to make as much use of them as possible to the issue that we're discussing. I'm not a master debater. I, I, I really don't know much about- I, the, I apologize. I, I, no, yeah, no, no, I, me and you are having a conversation. You don't need to apologize. What I'm telling you is that yeah. I see exactly what you're saying. I see the education you have and I see the passion you have. Now, if we can take that passion and create you into an interpreter for those that won't listen to someone like me, those that say, you're not an attorney, I know the law, or you understand, although I know the law, I study it, you know, so I, I kind of know the law. Mm -hmm. but we need these interpreters. And I'm hoping that a lot of people on here, like Eric, will become from something that they picked up saying, hey, don't tell me because I have a buddy, Jamal and Darrell, that I'll get right on here with you and challenge that educational prospect that you're laying out. And I will address it because I have firsthand access to be able to implement different things and different ideas. And that's that's all I want. I want us to be able to have a cause of action because without that cause of action, we are just repetitively talking. And and, and that I don't want to participate in. Right. I just want to say one thank you for like I you're right, like I'm really passionate. I, I did not I've never I've been arrested, I've never been to my dad was incarcerated uh, when I was a kid and it was it kind of shaped me and I'm really passionate about this and I think I maybe took up more space than I intended to but originally I was asked to host this uh, or like to talk about this because of my background and my first thought was to reach out to Lisa and, and get you and like reach out to Jamal and like you know I was like I don't I know that I don't know this so like I just want to say like I really do care about the cause so like, I apologize that I took that much space and I, I I think you're brilliant and everything that you said is amazing. And just thank you. I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope we stay in touch and connected because I want to, like, I would like to, like, I'm really about this life. Like, I'm trying to, you know, I want to learn more about you. And that is evident to me. That's the point. And I'm trying to find the other people that are passionate about it like you, right? I, I'm going to say this, and I always say this, and, and, and it's not an offense thing, but I go, if you want something to watch, go watch TV. This is not about watching. You know, I'm sure no one wants to sit here and be like, damn, Michael got on a nice shirt. You know, Mitchell, look at Mitchell's stripes. No, we're not on here for that. We're on here for people to be able to exchange. I want to leave with information, too. I want to hear what Ron got to say, because Ron got this bookshelf with these books on it, and he's into something. And I'm going, I can't connect with Ron unless I know who exists out here, who I'm talking to, and then being able to say, how do we create a network when we're dealing with other people that don't want to hear us and listen to us, and we can collectively bring in more people? You guys kind of understand what I'm saying? We want to be an active group. Otherwise, we're going to be like everyone else doing Zooms, everyone else doing live, everything we see on TV. We're going to be here today. We're going to do this. And, you know, you may sit back and applaud ourselves, and the rest of the world's going to say, what the hell were they talking about? What was going on? I heard Darrell just talking. I heard Anna just talking. But um, what was Alexandra saying? And what was Gerald saying? No, 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 no. Let's, let's get to it. Come on, my people. Let's talk. If we go talk, let's talk. Can I ask you a question that somebody sent me directly about you that I don't know the answer to? Uh, somebody asked, uh, asked me if you uh, got compensated for the time that you spent and that you were uh, exonerated or like, basically like what the state did to 
make a mess of anything at all? I don't know the answer to that question. So I don't know if you want to talk about I'm hearing you, I'm but hearing your mic you. is kind of going in and out. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I don't know if that's just me. No, it's okay. Is it better now? Yes. Um, somebody messaged me and asked me if you got compensated in any way for the time that you did by the state, given that you signed or what the state did at all, if anything, to, I don't know, I guess, try to make amends. And I don't know, I don't know the answer to that. If you want to talk okay. about that. So I have two answers for that. The original one is no, not yet. I delayed filing my suit, which is happening now um, for a reason. I don't want to be caught up into the money part, right? You know, that's a do. Right now, I got things I need to be doing and other lives I want to be saving and I want to help that kid and I want to keep somebody else out of prison, right? That's first important to me. And secondly, let me ask you a question or anyone on here. How about I say to you, ah, let me give you 27 million after 32 years. So you go in right now and do 32 years and I'm gonna give you 27 million. Would you take that deal? That was a question. Would you take that deal, Anna? I wouldn't. Right, because that no matter what amount of money you gave me, you don't live long enough to enjoy it. And what would I buy to replace all the years that I missed? It's not about that kind of compensation. The compensation I want is from Commonwealth versus Darrell Jones. I want compensation of my people being aware and making an action to stop what goes on. I'll be compensated when Ron tells me I'm down, I'm in, I'm ready to fight. I will not allow it anymore. That's my compensation. Somebody want me to be compensated, compensate me with you. Darrell, I, I'm curious. I'm a, I'm a teacher at a high school. How could I teach students about this, this uh, concept of prison reform? What would you we'll want come me to do? your school? I'll come to your school. If I can go to Harvard and go to BC and all of those colleges, I'll come to your school. How about that? And you'll show them firsthand. Okay. Here's the deal. And then how can I volunteer to go to the prisons like you were saying? Where exactly. would I find information? I, I am looking, and I said I really don't understand the process of writing. There's a bunch of things up there I wanted to comment back to, right, and tell you. I just don't have this send button that, the send button that she's saying, so I don't know where it is. Technology, I'm out, yeah. right? But I can relate anybody on here and get you on a volunteer's list to go into the prison to talk to the brothers. I can directly do that. I was the chairman of those programs, so I know exactly who to contact now that's in place and get you in. Okay. You contact me, we'll put you on that list, you go to a prison. So, Darrell, uh, do you, would you be okay if we sent your, um, your contact information to the folks here or, did, or just to... Or directly, I'm, 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 op I'm open to that. I mean, uh, listen, I lived with people that watched me in a fishbowl and watched my whole life, bathroom, everything I did. I definitely don't have a problem with you having a number or an email, as long as we're talking about something. Give it out. So with that, um, you were inviting kind of people to exchange ideas, and we did want to get a chance for people to be able to talk. And because there's about 40 people, not everyone's going to be able to talk at once. So. We have about 10 minutes left. We are gonna give a chance just for, for people to reflect in, in breakout rooms. I wanna acknowledge there's a number of really rich questions in the chat. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll save that chat. Uh, Darrell and, and Jamal and Shade will we'll send that to you. And if there's other thoughts, you can share that way as well. Um, but when you go into your breakout rooms, um, there's a, a couple of things we wanna invite you to reflect on. Um, which is one, what are you, what, are, what is it that you heard today that made you stop and pause and really um, wonder about something that you didn't before? Um, what assumptions are you rethinking? And what do you want to learn more about or what do you want to take action on? So what made you pause? What assumptions are you rethinking? What action or learning do you want to do? Um, so we're going to just give you a chance to reflect in, in breakout groups and um, the questions are up there on your screen as well. We'll send it to you um, through the breakout rooms and um, we'll come back in about uh, seven minutes. We are almost at six o'clock. So what we did want to do is um, offer for those who want to stay on for 10 minutes to debrief and share. Uh, we have just a couple of questions, which is, 
what's one thing, um, what are some themes from your small group discussions and what's one thing you're taking away from this conversation? So we are gonna go until 6.10 to do that with those who wish to. Um, and if those who need to leave it at six o'clock, uh, thank you for joining. And um, we'll thank again at the end, but of course a, a huge, huge uh, debt of gratitude and appreciation um, to Jamal Hamilton, to Darrell Jones, um, and to Anna Shade Rodriguez um, for pushing us as the BDL to even make space for this conversation and for the voices that are at this table to be here. Um, so yes, much, much thank you. And we'll, we'll, we'll close at the end. If you are able to stay, um, we can go back to uh, the slide with the with the prompts, it's really just two questions. What were some themes from your small group discussions? What's one thing you're taking away from this conversation? Um, so again, feel free to raise your hand uh, if you would like to, to share and popcorn out. And if your voice wasn't heard before, you know, encourage you. I see uh, Yusuf and then uh, Mira. So I think that this conversation, like the forum, it was like very, important for a lot of young people because they don't understand like not all of them understand what it's like to be held in prison for either something that you did commit or something that was like very irrelevant that you didn't need to be there for and I think that what I would take away from this conversation is that there needs to be more of like discussions and interaction with the people who experience because they know best and they can like teach us about it and then we can, through those, we can take other actions on, so like when, so like for example, for young people, when they grow up, they can decide that they want to take part in like reforming the justice system and the criminal system so that no one, again, has to experience injustice in this way. Are we Any responding to this point? Because he made a great point. Yeah. I can't hear, I can't hear uh, Marissa at all. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I muted myself. <laughs> Darrell, I'm in the same position as you, trying to figure it all out. Um, yes, feel free to respond. And then I think uh, Mira had a, a comment and then uh, Emily as well. Yeah, so one of the themes that came up from almost all of our speakers was we feel like we're kind of distanced from the prison system if you haven't experienced it yourself. So we were thinking of ways that, what are ways that we can make a difference? It just like we were all like just feeling not helpless necessarily, but just wondering things that we could do. And just having conversations like this have been so helpful because it's just like valuable discussion and we're hearing firsthand experiences that a lot of people otherwise wouldn't get unless you were involved in this. And I think it's really important if we were to go like volunteer or just even enter a prison system and see what it's like in there or talk to people who are incarcerated. But if we were just wondering what are things that we can do to like help with prison reform. Well, Myra, as, and I was talking to young man Yusuf and Miles, two young guys in, in the box. I would call on you. I would call on you to say, let me organize who I need to organize, who may want to be involved to take a leadership position and bring your herd, so to speak, to the table. The platforms like this is what's important. And in order to provide what you need, we're going to need you to bring forth the people that care, right? Enough to learn what we need to do. We would never get it across in 10 minutes. I mean, if I could give you 32 years of my life in 10 minutes, then I really didn't have a life at all. And that's not going to happen. But I think if we create groups out of the people that are concerned first, we can make bigger moves because we know who's concerned. Don't always think everybody's concerned. You know, three kind of people in the world I learned in prison, and, 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 and I'm sticking to that. That's how I see people, and that's my view. Three kind of people. Those that watch it happen, let it happen, and make it happen. The watch it happen people may be on here right now, and they're really just watching. They're not showing up. They're not asking anything. They're not even showing their faces, right? And so you're not fully participating because you're not saying like, Raina, I'm right here. I'm outside my house. I'm on. I'll show my face to the public. I'm letting it be known this is where I stand, right? We have to let people be able to stand up. 
And those watch it happen people are the people that you ever had girlfriends or not women, but boyfriends or whatever. And there are people who can always tell you, I know what Michael was doing. Let me tell you what happened. So they spend their time watching everybody else. Those are the watch it happen people. The let it happen people are the people that normally end up in a situation like, let me tell you what happened to me. To make it happen, people don't be concerned with anything else other than what am I going to make happen? If Kimberly is sitting there, I'm almost sure she didn't get on here to say, now, I don't want to do nothing about it. I just want to watch this right here. You know what I mean? I just want to see what they were doing. No one's on here just to see what we're doing or what anybody's wearing or who, make, who put on the best makeup and who looks the best. We should be collectively trying to show these youth that are on here that we got an action plan. And today, we are accountable if they did not hear an action plan. That's why I say it's about the youth. They should not leave here without hearing from Luz, from Isaac, from Michael, from Emily, us adults having an action plan for them about what we're going to do. We didn't bring children on here just to say, check us out and listen to a bunch of adults use, you know, our intellect. This ain't about our intellect. This is about our compassion for each other, different fields coming together. So when I hit something that I can't explain, Sarah may be a therapist, let's just say, right? And then I'm saying, I know to be quiet at that moment, go ahead and hit them off, Sarah, break it down. And then I can compliment on that, right? If you're an attorney, play our roles and collectively come together to play that role. I don't understand why society doesn't understand that. And being in the box I was in, we learned to survive in there, happen to be together. We get creative to do all kinds of things. You would, wouldn't imagine the things we create in prison. There are, there are geniuses in prison. There is a guy sitting in a prison somewhere right now, if they put him in a lab that would already have solved this COVID, because that's all we do is figure out ways to do things, the impossible. Let's do something. It would be the same way as sitting here saying, I heard from Eric today, I saw Eric today, I looked at Eric today, and then tomorrow go, whatever happened to Eric Wells, right? If I gotta do that, then that means I participated in something where we were just talking, right? Let's not just talk. That's why I'm stressing that. Let's activate a unit and take the next group that's doing the same thing, bring them into this right here, and then say, Ira got a herd of 25, and they want this, and they need to know that. And let's create us an education series on here. Let's educate on different things about the prison system, like it's a class, like you do in college on this computer, and learn the things you need for your profession, and then take that and go out into the world and deliver the information that they have in top. I think you've just laid down a, a challenge for us. Oh, definitely a challenge. And for the and for the community. Um, Thank you. Kimberly. Kimberly has a little hand, so I see it. Oh, I was just clapping. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was applause. That was applause. <laughs> um, we have time for a, a couple more people to share, you know, their reflections and and I saw um, Mickey has a hand and then um, Emily Rivera. Oh, and oh, Michael's just, uh, Michael has a hand as well. Hi, Michael, nice to see you. <laughs> um, so why don't we close with those, those three comments, though this is not an ending to the conversation. So starting with Mickey. Okay. So in our group, we mainly discussed three points. One is regarding the idea of starting to provide love being able to change things with the idea of being able to express this love in our action. Second was about how we, people who are like in prison or in going to trail, it's like against the Commonwealth. And that's a really big point that sometimes not everyone recognizes. It's like, are you going against just another eternity? But it's really the Commonwealth. The third point we were talking about, um, we're talking about how there's this idea of bias because the story about robbing someone, but the person who's dealing with drugs just doesn't get any consequences. How does that even goes with our system? It just doesn't make sense rationally. And there's another idea that I was thinking when um, the point was being made about education and all of that. Um, there's a novel that I've been reading um, for this past few months was um, 1984 by George 
Orwell is talking about a dictatorship in London in 1984 and what happens our um, protagonist basically Winston he wants to set a rebellion against the government but what had happened is that the society had been changed so much that no one recognized anything but to believe the government everything like propaganda and that's the idea of if, they, if we limit our education, nothing can be done. And Winston really wants to take in an action, but he's so limited to no one can stand up with him. So this idea of really back to what we're talking about, how we need to collectively as a community take action. And that's really a matter about educating people about this. Is it really about credibility of someone's status? Does credibility matter at this point? Because some people who are credible might not, let's say like might, be biased. We don't know anything of like that. I'm not saying I'm bringing to the table about this idea is that there's so much around our own society that are changing. And so I, I like learning about these really shaped my own knowledge or my perspective. So it was fun time learning about these. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do Emily and Michael. All right. Thank you. So I also want to kind of agree with Mickey about how we should have, as a community, all come together to really look forward into this whole topic and also try our best to make a change. And at the same time, we have to make a stand as people at all together. We have to make a difference because we should all sure know that the government or the president or police is not going to make a difference. We and we also just really have to, and I personally, what I really want to do I want to go to these prisons and talk to these prisoners and know what their perspective is like or know what their what, what's their story and what they went through. And because, like I said in my breakout group, how we have to come together as a community. And it's also so devastating to know that this is what society has came to. It's really devastating. And how in the breakout room, I said something like how excuse me, how we said something like how together, excuse me, I'm pausing a lot, <laughs> and how we should like, like how Mira said, she said we should have like a re rehabilitation programs and create programs for like youth kit, for youth and other people like teenagers to learn about this topic and be educated by this topic by like Darrell or Jamal or just anybody who has experienced this. And I'm really thankful that I, I was here to learn about this and learn about this topic. And now personally, I wanna go deep, more deep into this topic and learn more about everything that's going on. And I really thank you to the both speakers and everybody here today. And yeah, that's what I took from it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Michael. Yeah, I just wanted to like first thank um, the speakers. Um, I didn't know like what I was signing up for, but I think when I came here and now like at the end of the conversation, all I can think about is like action items. So I'm like thinking about like what the BDL maybe can do and sort of like connecting us as all people who signed up to be here today, like maybe with resources to like go into prisons like soon, um, COVID pending. So we can sort of have an actual like an item from this conversation because I don't want to just consume these stories and kind of weave and say like oh like we did something today when we really didn't so I hope that everyone in this room can like commit like one thing I was saying in the breakout session I was like I'm gonna commit from now on to like volunteer in prisons and like hold myself accountable and, like go and do that work so like if we can kind of all collectively come together and like commit to that stuff um I think that would make this conversation productive and be like a first step to many and sort of like tackling this issue yeah so thank you for sharing that um that is actually an excellent transition to our next um, point, which was actually going to be, thanks Marisa, um, uh, ways to take action. There are obviously a lot of different ways to take action. And I think that it's important for each of us to look within ourselves and our own communities to find the way that makes sense for us as individuals and as a community to do that. These are a couple of suggestions. Um, or a couple of ideas or places to start. Um, uh, Darrell's no, uh, Dear Homework Media, um, uh, Anna Shade had earlier mentioned um, the Prison Book Program and the Massachusetts Bail Fund as places to get started. Um, those websites are there if you wanna take a look at those. Um, we will also be sending out as a follow-up um, contact information. Um, and some other resources. I'll be sending that out either tomorrow or early next week. 
Um, so yeah, for sure. Do your own work um, in term your you know in terms of looking into your own community and your own self. Um, here are a couple of first steps, and we'll be sending out some more as well. Um, I have a couple of quick BDL related announcements to share um, for folks who want to stay involved with the BDL. Um, uh, we're having our end of season awards parties in, in two weeks, June 2nd and June 4th. Um, we're also hosting debate season calendar feedback sessions. So we're talking about what we'll be doing next year for a debate season calendar. Um, uh, our fourth forum is coming up on June 11th and we'll be talking actually about next year's evidence. Our fifth forum, our uh, possibly our final forum um, is June 18th and we are still looking for speakers. Um, so if you have an idea you want to share, um, please let us know. Um, last but not least, some opportunities for debate, not last, um, one more thing for from the BDL, some debater opportunities. Um, summer camp is August 17th through 28th. If you're interested in coming out to summer camp, um, check out bossdebate.org slash summer. Um, also, we're starting to share information about our dual enrollment debate course with Suffolk University. So if you want to get college credit for learning about debate, that is an excellent opportunity. Um, and actually, last but not least, certainly not least at all, um, I want to give um, each of you a thank you and a shout out for being here. And most importantly, I want to thank our panelists, um, Darrell and Jamal, um, for being here, for sharing your experience experiences. I can't imagine that this was easy to talk about these experiences and Jamal, I know you shared that it was harder than even you expected. So I just want to give you both, you know, a huge shout out and a, a huge appreciation and thank you for, for being part of this. Um, I know it is business, but I know it is also very personal business. Um, so thank you for being here. Um, if anyone else wants to share one last word before we sign off, um, either, and, and also, sorry, and also to Shade for, for making the connection um, and for, for sharing some of your thoughts as well. So if either of our panelists want to share a closing word um, to, to send us on our way. I'm just letting Brother Jamal go. Brother. <laughs> I can't no, hear I think you're muted. Yeah, I was in the middle of writing you all a message. No, I was just saying thank you for receiving this with love, with an open heart, and challenging one another to go further with this discussion. Um, it, it really means a lot just to have the space to, to share. And I would say, I, I would say the same, too. I, I'm... I'm grateful to even interact with other human beings from the free society. I love it, right? Because I'm learning you like you're learning us. That's what I'm trying to make sure that I can interpret back into the prison. I get so many calls a day from different guys in Castro. I was there 32 years. So a lot of the kids I didn't raised or, you know, I know their fathers. You got to understand in that prison system right now, are fathers, son, and grandfathers. I've seen the generation of it come in, right? And I try to interpret what the community is out here saying. What did Luz really say? What is Eric saying? And I try to make sure that we got an idea, a better idea than we had when I was in because we don't have access to these things. We don't, no one in prison is watching Zoom, watching the stations you watch and getting Netflix, exchanging all this information. We don't hear it. So the platforms we have to go to is radio. 90% of the time, it's radio in prison. People in there need to hear from you. They need to hear how you feel. They need to know that you care, that you're concerned, that you're even discussing this. So I did an um, interview with WBZ Dan Ray, and we wind up going extra hour and so on on his show, a special thing, so many call-ins. Well, why don't you guys reach out to those same medias and tell them, we, we want to get on your station. And we want to bring forth this person. If we start bombarding them with our own calls saying, we want to hear from that person. I want to hear from Jamal again. And I want, I want him on that show. And I'll be tuned in. And you'll get more viewers and more listeners or whatever. We have to go to those outlets. That's why I'm saying do your homework media. Either we become our own media or we let other people interpret it for us. If we're not going to move on becoming our own media, we're in a lot of trouble. Right now, you guys can provide a lot. I want the insight to hear from 
Michael, Emily, I haven't been able to hear from the public. We only see you for a moment on a TV screen, and nine out of 10 times is lock them up. They shouldn't be doing this. They're killers. They're, they're rapists. And, 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 I, and I'm trying to get across that all of those accusations that people would make against stigmatize the prison, that was happening to me as well. I was a killer. I was, when I, I was in prison for natural life. I don't know why this state applauds itself on not having a death penalty. It doesn't make sense to me because they hold me in there to die. I was never supposed to be out. So if anything, it's crueler. It, it might sound crazy, but at some point, I'd rather you go ahead and give me the needle. I know guys in prison that are getting high so much, they'll take that needle just as another drug. And we're not addressing issues that we should. Somebody out here needs to get some specialists on here and make the case that, wait a minute, if the drug thing is so bad, let me look at all the articles of all the guards that got arrested at Norfolk prison. See, you guys, that's why I call it do your homework, if you don't know. Go look and list all the prison guards that have been arrested for bringing drugs into the prison, and then you can make the case that they are perpetuating, making people who involve themselves with drugs. If they're bringing it to us, then your, your kids are in there getting high and they come home as addicts. But you can see how many of them have been arrested. No one brings up those exact issues and say, here go 27 of your guards that got busted bringing in drugs. That means they were bringing them somebody. They created addicts to put Daryl at risk and you see them walking the street. You better get on that. You better be pointing out their flaws and making something happen with that. I had a great time. I appreciate it. And I definitely hope that the people that contact me are actionaries. If, you, if, if you're contacting me for watching and talking, you won't be getting me. I don't participate in that. I'm, I'm with the action. I'll stand behind you 100% and whatever the cause is, but it's got to be an action. Too many intelligent people on here and too many people in good positions and established lives that need to come to the forefront to get your people to hear me and interpret what I'm saying and me to get my people to hear you and interpret what you're saying. I just want to say thank you for making me better as a person better at my job better as an activist uh i'm gonna call you we're gonna talk i hope that that's okay we're friends now uh i really appreciated you and jamal i've known you for a lot of years like i really appreciate i know it was hard for you i really appreciate you yeah. sharing that just thank you both for making me a better person that's all i got oh, thank, you. thank you everybody we'll see you soon